রফিক স্যার আপনি পছন্দ করে দিবেন কাদেরকে দিব অবশ্যই অবশ্যই থ্যাংক ইউ আমরা লাইভে আছি ভাই শুরু করেন সুপ্রিয় চিকিৎসক মন্ডলী কর্তৃক আয়োজিত আজকের টপিক ইসিজি অফ ব্রেডি ক্যারিয়ার অ্যান্ড কন্ডাকশন অ্যাবনর্মালিটি আমাদের মাঝে আজকে ইলেকট্রোফিজিওলজিস্টিকারিয়ারমালিটিজিওলজিস্টার শুরু করার জন্য মানে স্বাগত বক্তব্য দেওয়ার জন্য আমাদের সর্বজন শ্রদ্ধ প্রফেসর কাজী তারিকুল ইসলাম স্যারকে আহ্বান জানাচ্ছি থ্যাংক ইউ এহসান এটা আমার জন্য একটা বিশেষ পাওয়া যে আমার খুবই একজন প্রিয় মানুষ ডক্টর রফিক আহমেদ উনি মেডিকেল কলেজে আমার মেডিকেল কলেজেরই আমার দু বছরের সিনিয়র ছিলেন নানান সময় নানান কারণে রফিক বাংলাদেশকে অনেক কিছু দিয়েছেন বিসিপিএস কে দিয়েছেন ন্যাশনাল ইনস্টিটিউট অফ কার্ডিওভাসকুলার ডিজিজ যেটা আমরা এনআইসিভিডি জানি ইলেকট্রোফিজিওলজি বাংলাদেশের স্থাপনা এবং তার হাত ধরে আজকে যতদূর এগিয়ে যাওয়া এবং ম্যান পাওয়ার ডেভেলপমেন্ট মানুষকে ট্রেনিং দেওয়া তাদেরকে তাদের দ্বারা আবার অন্যদেরকে তৈরি করা এটা রফিক ভাইয়ের একটা মানে অনবদ্য অবদান বিদেশে বাংলাদেশি অনেকেই অবস্থান করেন আমরা জানি যারা হয়তো অনেক অর্থ উপার্জন করেন নাম টাম তাদের অনেক কিছু আছে কিন্তু দেশের জন্য বিশাল একটা অনুভূতি মনে ধারণ করে দেশকে কিছু দেওয়া এটা ডক্টর রফিক আহমেদের কোনো তুলনা হয় না এবং আমি মনে করি যে ওনার আজকে আজকে শুধু নয় উনি আমাকে যখন ফোন করছিলেন যে এই বিডি ফিজিশিয়ান কারা এবং কি ব্যাপার এখানে জয়েন করা যাবে কিনা এটা প্ল্যাটফর্মটা আসলে আমি খুব স্বাভাবিক আমি রফিক ভাইকে বলছিলাম রফিক ভাই এরা এখানে আমি শুধু নয় মাহমুদ হাসান স্যার সহ আমাদের আমরা সবাই আমাদের অনেক টিচার এখানে আমরা বক্তব্য দিয়ে থাকি আপনি চোখ বন্ধ করে এখানে আসতে পারেন এবং এখানে আপনার মতো মানুষের বক্তব্য শুনতে পারলে অবশ্যই চিকিৎসকরা অনেক বেশি বেনিফিটেড হবেন আমি কথা আর বাড়াবো না আমার অত্যন্ত মানে পরম শ্রদ্ধেও আমার সরাসরি শিক্ষক মাহমুদ হাসান স্যারও এখানে আছেন আজকে আমার একটা অন্য এক্সাইটমেন্ট আমি অনুভব করছি যে আমরা যে তিনজন মানুষ এখানে আছি আমরা তিনজনেই রাজশাহী মেডিকেল কলেজেরই প্রাক্তন ছাত্র সো আজকে একটা অন্য রকম দিন রফিক রফিক ভাইকে আমি ওয়েলকাম করছি এবং আমার বক্তব্য এখানেই শেষ করছি আবারও আমরা কখনো না কখনো আমরা দেখা পাবো এবং সবাইকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি আর স্যারকে সালাম জানাচ্ছি
the talk will be in English because uh, sometimes we have students from outside Bangladesh who attend this no, seminar. Sir. Sir, you can do it in Bangla, sir. Mix it, sir. Because the majority of Bangladesh is our mother. Sure. So today we are going to talk about bradycardia. And I'm going to recapitulate and I will give you a little bit of history of ECG. So this is the person, well, this is a British physiologist who first recorded ECG. But he did not record ECG what we talk about today. He just recorded that it, there is electrical activity of the heart, and this is his recording. This is not the recording. This is an apex cardiogram where you can see the E, what is marked, this line, where what is the electrical signal he recorded, and nobody paid much importance to this thing. And then later on, there is a Dutch, and this is the dog he used to take in meetings, his dog's name was Jimmy. He will ask Jimmy to put one foot in a saline solution, the other foot in a saline solution, and then we connect it to a machine and record signals. And Jimmy became pretty famous. And then the ECG that we see today um, was done by Eindhoven. This is his photograph at younger age. This is when he was older, visiting United States. What he recorded with this big machine, this machine was about 600 pound in weight, and this is the second model of the same machine. But his signals were no different than, uh, than Euler's. You can see, people ask me, why do they call it PQRS? They were not called PQRS. Initially, they called this funny signal here. They thought this is actual electrogram, they called it A. And then the ventricular, they marked B, C, and D. But this was of no good. Einstein is a very good mathematician. So what he did, he then extrapolated the signal. Uh, with mathematical correction for dampening. And this is the signal he got, and which looks like modern ECG. And he named them PQRS. And the question is, why did he come up with PQRS name? There is a gentleman named Descartes. He was a mathematician and he described sine waves. And he started with P. And that P, it is thought that Eindhoven followed the naming that he said P, Q, R, S, and then T. And then the other concept was that if you start in the middle of the alphabet, you can add something before or after, like T wave, later on they added E wave. So this is a little bit of history in this ECG. And, but even with this ECG recording, people were not impressed until he presented data that this is the ECG, and then he did carotid artery, um, carotid uh, gram and showed the relationship between the ECG and hemodynamics. And that's when people say, well, this is important. It's interesting that his early ECG machine was so big that they could not take them to the hospital. So patients were connected by telephone line to his laboratory, which was about 10 miles from the hospital. So I'm going to recapture the conduction system that we looked at, sinus node, which is at the junction of superior vena cava and right atrium, and then the AV node, and you can dissect the AV node, and this is the right bundle, which is a narrow structure. In contrast, the left bundle is a very wide structure, and it's two fascicles. One is anterior, and one is posterior. It's a pretty broad structure, left um, bundle, bundle. Again, the intervals, P, Q, R, S. Uh, P, R interval is from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the Q, R, S complex from the beginning of QRS complex to the end of the T wave is QRS duration. And I'm going to stop here because this is where we'll be focusing on. So which part is what? And this is a little bit difficult to understand. If you look in the ECG, the P wave is when the electricity is conducting through the atrium. However, the AV node conduction starts somewhere here. So before, just after a little bit after the P wave starts, the AV conduction starts, and then the PR segment represents part of the AV conduction, his bundle, bundle branch. And once it reaches Parkin G fiber, that's when we see the QRS complex. Now, this is, I showed this ECG last time. Um, this is sinus rhythm. Why sinus rhythm? Because there is P wave before each QRS complex, and the P wave is upright in lead 2, 3 AVF, which is normal axis of P wave, so it's sinus rhythm rate. So this is how the ECGs are recorded. 
Um, we have these graphic papers. Uh, again, I'm not going to go back again. So uh, calibration, how do we de describe rate? Everybody knows there are different formulas. If the heart rate is very regular, then if we measure only one interval, that will give us accurate heart rate. But if there is variability, that doesn't work well. So, so if we do this with just one interval, that one small large box, heart rate 300, 150, three box 100, four box 75, five box 60, six box 50, after that it becomes inaccurate. Or I like this one. I like to measure about six second interval and find out how many heartbeats are there. Like over here, one, two, three, four, five, six heartbeat in six seconds times 10, heart rate is 60. There is another formula. You can measure the interval, how many milliseconds, 60,000 divided by RR interval. So these are many different ways of calculating the heart rate. And, but it should be used appropriately. Uh, I prefer uh, measuring a period of six seconds or 10 seconds and then multiplying it. So this rate was 60 bits per minute. Um, I want um, one volunteer for this. ECG. I cannot see everybody's name, so I can't call somebody by name. So if somebody could volunteer, that would be great. Sir, salam alaikum. Yes, sir. I'm Dr. Maysam Subham. OK. Can you read this ECG? This sir, so sinus rhythm uh, as there is PF present, mm -hmm. and and sir, a rhythm is regular as a RR interval is regular. Okay. And sir, there can be sir sinus bradycardia as yeah. The, what is the heart rate? Sir, heart rate is around around sixty, sir. Around sixty. Five five large car in between RR interval. So this is actually 54. Fine. Yes, sir, yes. yes. Fine. Okay. Yes, sir. And the PR interval is normal? The PR interval is normal, sir. Three to five a small a small square, sir. Yeah, it is around three a small square. See, actually four, so 160 millisecond. Yes, sir. And the QR is duration? Yes, sir. Yes, in normal, sir. How how many boxes? There is sir one. Or one box is around, sir? Two boxes, actually. If you look at uh, any of these, uh, like chest lead, like V3, you'll see two boxes. That's 80 milliseconds. So that's yes, normal, right? And yes, the QT interval is normal. So what is your final diagnosis? Sir, my final diagnosis is sinus bradycardia. What did you say? Sin sinus bradycardia. Yes. But did you say non-specific? Yes, sir. It's It can be non-specific. No? No, that's not a comment from the ECG. I think the, the simple diagnosis is sinus bradycardia, otherwise normal ECG. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. We'll go to the next ECG. Um, any, anybody else? Dr. Maisam Subhan. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Uh, please, Nijar, video take to on Kurban. I'm Rapna Chiharao Dictaji. Please, um, Jay, hand raise, Corbin, please, to Chahara the cabin. Hi, Dr. Maisum, please. Dr. Maisum did already. So next, who is doing now? Oneke Hattule Boshe se. Dr. Mahmoudul Hassan. Sorry, good sir. Okay. Hi, please. Okay, go ahead. I believe the rate is 45 bits. It is around 48. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, sir, it is Clear a interval. sinus rhythm. Sinus rhythm. Clear interval is uh, the prolonged, sir. Uh, it is uh, one, two, sir. Around five small square or more okay. than that. That's how many milliseconds? 200 milliseconds, right? 200 milliseconds, right, sir. Right. Normal or abnormal? That's normal, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Of normal, sir. normal, sir. Yes. QR is duration? 
QRS duration is uh, two small, uh, two or three small skirts. That's one hundred no, twenty millisecond. No, it three. can't be two or three. It's either two uh, or three. Sir, two small squares, sir. Eighty milliseconds. Two normal, small. sir. Eighty, 80 milliseconds. Fine, normal, sir. QRS duration. QT interval. QT interval is. Uh, so nine small squares, sir. Yep. So four hundred forty millisecond. Yes, sir. Okay. Is there any STT wave changes? ST segment is normal or abnormal? Sir, one are uh, lead one and lead two take is slightly depressed both of them. Well, lead one, if you look at lead one, it's almost at the level of the PR segment. Yes. So I don't think so. To be depressed, it should be more than, at least more than half a box. So PR, ST segment looks fine. If you look at lead V2, ST segment is slightly elevated, right? But that's normal variant. Yes. T wave is normal or abnormal? Five small square. No, T wave amplitude is not a, a, a important thing, but normal direction. Sense. Yeah, okay. Why do you say it's normal? I mean, lead V1T is inverted, right? Yes, sir. Lead up AVRT is inverted. Is that normal or abnormal? It abnormal. No, your your conclusion is fine. So this is normal. The way the way to remember T wave, T wave follows the direction of the QRS complex. So if you look at lead V1, QRS is negative mainly. It's negative. AVR QRS is negative, negative. If you look at other leads where most of the leads where the QRS is positive, T wave is positive. So you are normal. What is your final diagnosis? Sinus bradycardia. And then comma, otherwise normal ECG. Normal ECG. Yes. Yeah, otherwise normal. Because yes. that sinus bradycardia is an abnormal finding. Yes. Okay. Good. I will we'll, we'll move to the next to see you. Um, anybody else? I. So what I'm doing, I'm actually, if you look at the ECGs, the heart rate is getting lower and lower. So, I've, and we'll come to that conclusion later on. Uh, any other volunteer? Dr. Shofikul Islam, please. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Um, sir, in this ECG, the rate is around, uh, is around uh, 40, uh, 40 bits per minute. Yeah, 40. Rhythm is regular and sinus yeah. rhythm. Why do you say sinus? Because P wave is present uh, before each QRS complex and it is upright in 2 3 AVF. Fantastic. Then, sir, a PR interval uh, is. It's uh, difficult. Four... To see. I'm sorry, the grid no, is normal, looks normal. Yes, I have normal. measured it 60 millisecond or something. Yes, sir. QRS duration is a. Uh, uh, less than two small. Yeah, 84, 84 milliseconds. Fine. So, what is your final ST segment? Sir, normal, sir. Normal. And T wave? So, T wave is normal. Okay. So, what is your final conclusion? Sir, uh, it seems a sinus bradycardia, otherwise normal CZ. Okay. Now, now, my question is this patient is with you? Uh, yes. What will you do with this patient? Right? Yes. 64 year old male with a heart rate of 40 beats per minute. What will you do? Will you so do I something? Will, uh, I will uh, evaluate him uh, clinically if he is symptomatic or not, or if uh, he has any comorbid condition or any drug history. So and no drug, this patient, no drug, he has no other symptom at all. He just came for a normal physical exam. Will you do anything about it? 
doctor. I I will search for any secondary cause for this sinus bradycardia. No like, secondary cause. His thyroid function is normal. He is not on any medication. So secondary cause mainly thyroid function can cause bradycardia, but he's otherwise very healthy person. He exercises regularly. Everything. But as patient has got no symptoms or uh, no co comorbid condition, I will follow up the patient. Or uh, yeah, perfect. It, it, the reason I'm bringing up this issue is heart rate of 40. Um, is look at this. This is one of the best tennis players in the world history, Bjorn Borg. His resting heart rate was 38 beats per minute. After playing six set of tennis, his heart rate would go to 78. So that tells you that the heart rate per se is not important, but it's the symptom what is important. Please remember that, that, uh, that uh, history is, is very important. I'm going to bring some other ECGs, interesting ECGs. This is an ECG from an elephant. By our age, this is a 36 year old female, heart rate of 25 beats per minute. And this is another animal. This animal was hunting at this time, the ECG was done and his heart rate was eight beats per minute. This is an ECG from a blue whale. What happens with blue whale that when it is on the surface, its heart rate is 30, 35. When it dives down underwater, its heart rate drops to as low as four beats per minute. The reason I'm showing this ECG that, that the heart rate is important, but that's not the only factor because this such a big whale can live a whale is 180,000 kilogram, human being 70 and elephant is five to less. Such a big animal can live with a heartbeat of four beats per minute. No pass out. It's a curiosity, how do they record this on whale? What they do is that they put suction cup under this. This is three suction cups and it's connected to telemetry monitor. I mean, it's amazing that the reason I show this is just to stimulate some thinking process that how science is developing and how people do research. I mean, just to record ECG, somebody had to make this machine and understand how to connect it. To record ECG on the elephant, they sutured it on the skin of the elephant to record ECG. So I want somebody uh, to do this, this one. Anybody? Okay, I'll find somebody. Koshik is can you talk? About Noshin Tabasum. Can you unmute your sir? Assalamualaikum, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, Noshin is talking now. Okay, Noshin, okay. can you tell me yes, what sir. this is? Yes, sir, I will try. Uh, so, um, the I heart... The rate, yeah, 44. Okay, so the heart rate is 44, mm -hmm. um, but I cannot see any uh, P wave in front of the QRSs, but there might be uh, a P wave following the QRS in the lead two. Mm -hmm. Um the QRS duration uh, seems to be to within normal limit. I cannot I count the normal. boxes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. The QT so, interval is also normal. T wave okay. is, so is normal. What is your diagnosis? Um, mm, sir, uh, this could be so short RP. <clears throat> no, sir. Short RP will be tachycardia, right? This is not yes, tachycardia. Yes, so this is bradycardia. Yes, but very good, yeah. So you have heart rate of 44, normal QRS duration. So who is initiating the ECG in this rhythm? And you said there is a P wave after Q. That's interesting to, that you found that. In lead two, you can see this notch and my pointer, that's yes, a P wave. So who is, who is, who is doing this? So maybe uh, junctional rhythm. Absolutely, yeah. perfect. So. If I, I point out to the audience that if a V junction initiates the rhythm, it will go down to produce the QRS complex and it will come backward to produce the P wave. 
So this is a junctional rhythm uh, at a rate of 44 beats per minute. I mean, this is a 44-year-old uh, male. Why did it happen? We don't know. I, I don't remember. I didn't write down the symptoms. But thank you. That's, uh, that's very good. Yes, sir. So the same patient, um, this was August 6th. What happened is that, look at this. What happened that actually patient had sinus bradycardia, then sinus got slower, junction took over because junction has an escape rate of 40 beats per minute or a little bit over 40, and it continued. And then again, gradually, when sinus came over, it took over. So now I have from junction, it is shifting to sinus bradycardia. So this can happen even in normal person, this can happen during sleep. Um, again, uh, the, this is not a scary rhythm. It, you have to evaluate the patient, evaluate the symptom. Um, and then the, one of the issues that comes up when the heart rate is low, does the patient need pacemaker? We have to be careful. The younger the patient is, less resistant, more resistant will have to be to put a pacemaker in. So this is the patient after a few days, uh, normal sinus rhythm. I think patient came with some other issues um, to the emergency. If you look at this ECG was done in the emergency room in the ER. So probably some uh, acute issue going on. So the PR interval, um, we, we talked about the PR interval, the way we measure it, we look at the boxes. So here we have the PR interval, I have magnified it, one, two, three boxes, PR interval is 120 milliseconds. And so 130, a little bit over um, that. So I want someone to do this one. I have write, written down heart rate over here. You can see the grid. Um, and then who was there before? Uh, was it, um, I called somebody else. Good morning, sir. Who is speaking? Dr. Koshik. Koshik, okay, good. Koshik, can you do this, please? please. Yes, sir. As you see, I have put the rate down, 56 bits per minute. Yes, 56. Uh, so uh, P, uh, P is uh, present there. Okay. Uh, is, uh, that is uh, initiated from uh, sinus uh, SNO. Okay. Which, uh, rate is uh, slow, that is 56. Okay. So uh, here, PR is uh, PR is uh, abnormal and prolonged. So. What is it? What is the PR I, interval? So uh, uh, if I am uh, looking at the strip rhythm, uh, yeah. so PR. Look in lead V1. So, uh, so, so uh, more than sir, eight small uh, uh, box. Okay, so how much is it? So, uh, around uh, 320 millisecond. No. One big box, you have two big boxes almost. Oh. So, so sorry, two, two big boxes, boxes. yes, yes. 400 so, milliseconds. Yes, yes. That's a markedly prolonged. So, what is your diagnosis? And okay, give, give me some comment about the T wave and ST segment. So, so T wave. Mm -hmm. T wave. T wave. Yeah. Or Q wave. So, there T, is. T, T wave. T wave, sir. Yes. So T wave uh, is T wave is uh, sir, uh, normal, sir. Well, it's a little flat, right? If you look at the earlier ECGs, look at lead V five, V six, uh, lead one. So diffuse T wave flattening. So what is your final conclusion? Yes. So there is there is a first degree, sir. Maybe. Yep. Sinus bradycardia, first degree AV block. And I'll okay. just comment diffuse T wave flattening. <clears throat> Not more than that. I don't know why it is flat, so we don't have to go into it. So remember, sinus rhythm with first degree AV block. Thank you. Yes. yes. Well, anybody else for this, this one? Dr. Rishad. Yes, go ahead. Are you there, Dr. Rishad? Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. Can you do this ECG, please? 
I'll give you heart rate is 71 beats per minute. Yes, sir. So here, what sir, uh, uh, PR, <clears throat> uh, RR interval is regular and due to, uh, there is a P, uh, PR interval is, P is inverted in uh, lead V1 and also PR interval is prolonged. How much? What is it? About, sir, uh, 400 millisecond. Yeah, I'll take that. A little bit less than that. If you look at lead V1, it's yes. um, about 309. Yeah, over here, you can actually say 400 millisecond. Fine, I'll take that. Is it sinus rhythm? What is the rhythm, sinus or not sinus? So sinus, sir. P wave is present in upright in two, three waves, sir. Perfect. But you said the P wave is negative in lead V1. What do you mean by, by that? Biphasic P wave, exactly, sir. Exactly. Exactly. So sinus rhythm will be biphasic. If you look at it the, where my arrow is, the first part is positive, the second part is negative. So it's a biphasic. So that's a sinus P wave. So, and then PR interval, QR duration is two boxes, right? Yes, sir. QT yes, interval sir. 400 milliseconds. So what is your final conclusion? Uh, this is, sir. Uh, finally, sir, what I said, sir. Uh, Sinus rhythm, which first degree AB block. Right? Yes, sir. That's your conclusion. Okay, I, please stay with me. I'm going to show you another ECG. What do you think of this ECG? This heart rate is 101 beats per minute. What is the rhythm? Uh, so this is not a sinus rhythm. There is no P wave present yes. in the lead two, and uh, this could be such junctional tachycardia. Yep, so okay. So look at this, this is what happened. That this is the same patient. So this was the P <laughs> interval with a heart rate of 71 beats per minute. Next ECG, heart rate is 78 beats per minute. Because of the PR so long, it comes close to T wave. Yes, sir. And then when it goes to 100 beats per minute, it gets superimposed on the T wave. So you are absolutely right. If I showed you this ECG, you may think of sinus junction tachycardia, but this was not E wave. So this is a common problem that we can face that when the first, there is first degree AV block and there is sinus tachycardia T wave uh, can superimpose, P wave can superimpose on the T wave and we may not see. So we need to find uh, another ECG, uh, older ECG to see what the background ECG is. So uh, please give this in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Um, somebody else? Anybody wants to do this one? Partho? Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, can you do this ECG, please? Yes, sir. Uh, the rhythm is uh, uh, sinus, um, the sinus rhythm. The rhythm okay. is irregular. irregular. Mm -hmm. And that is. Sense of PR with some leads and estimate. Uh, what, what, what did you say? P wave? P waves are absent in some leads. Which lead is absent? Uh, lead five. Lead five well, lead. Okay, so this is what happens, uh, Partho. Please remember that ECG, some leads you can see it better. So mm -hmm. if you can, like, look at lead V1. Can you see the P wave? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, you can see the P wave here, right? Yes, yes, sir. And then you can see the P wave here. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So the question is, in other leads, if you cannot see it, it's because of the position of the lead. But once you see it in one lead, it must be present in other leads also, if we magnify it. So yes. why is that irregularity? What's happening? Uh, 
appears by my own self. Okay. So, can you see my pointer? Yes, sir. This is the P yes. wave, right? Yes, sir. Followed by QRS complex. Yes. And this is the P wave followed by QRS. But where is this one coming from? Is there a P wave? No, no, sir. So no, but what is this one? This is P wave. Another. Exactly. So, P wave, QRS complex. Mm. P wave, QRS complex, right? Mm. Okay. So, what is this PR interval compared to this? Is this longer? This is a variable. PR. PR so is variable. No, not variable, just pattern there. So, this is a little short. This mm. is longer, right? Yes, sir. Do you think yes. this is a P wave? Yes, sir. And what happened? It did not there conduct. Is, oh, no, there is no QRS. <clears throat> QRS, fine. And then this is again short PR, longer PR, and this one did not conduct. So okay. what is this called? What is it? No, this type one. Wenkeba. 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 Do you understand this, right? Yes, so, this type one. This type one. Wenkeba AV block. So yes. again, I'm going, so look at this. I have put the timers there. So this PR is 240 millisecond. Mm. This PR is 320 millisecond. This P did not conduct. And this one again, back to short, longer block. So this is typical Wankeva IV block. Anybody, any question about it? If there is any question, I will, I will answer it. So when you look at an ECG, initially it looked irregular, but there is a pattern to it. There is a two-bit pause, two-bit pause. So in this chaos, you always start, don't look all over the place, then you'll get more confused. Look at only one lead to see if you can see any pattern. And as we showed, we could see a pattern. P, QRS, then PR interval gets longer, blocked, P, QRS, longer, again, blocked. So this is typical one by if block. Thank you, Parthas. Um, Anybody else? Um, Sumaya Parvej. Is Sumaya, Sumaya there? Dr. Murad. Okay, Murad. Murad? Dr. Murad, Dr. Mahmudul Hassan, Dr. Joshimuddin, anyone? Dr. Joshimuddin, Mahmudul Hassan answered. So, Dr. Joshimuddin, please. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, listen, please remember, you can answer it and you don't have to be correct. So uh, that's the way to learn. So I I'm just want to make sure that everybody participates in this. Uh, that makes it more attractive. Um, Dr. Dr. Mohsan 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 sir. Awesome. Mohsan 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 Okay, good. Sir, this you... is, the, it, sir, it is uh, sinus, si, sinus, patient has sinus freedom. Mm -hmm. As P wave is positive in 2 3 ABFs okay. and present before QRS. Okay. And sir, PR intervals are gradually prolonged if we see the lead to rhythm strip. Yes. And sir, there is. After gradual increasing of peer interval, there is a drop bit. Yes. I, I see. And uh -huh. sir, Q, um, Q, QT interval is normal, I think, okay. sir. Mm -hmm. So, for my diagnosis, it may be a case of Mobis type 1, second degree heart block, that means when came back phenomenon. When came back phenomenon, yes. So, my question is so you can see my pointer, P wave, right? Sir, slide, slide cell, yeah, biphasic. No, no, this is a yeah, P money. wave, right? Yes, sir, P wave. P wave, QRS complex. This PR is prolonged. This is the P wave, right? It is on the T wave. It yes, is prolonged. Sir. What happened to the other P wave? 
Sir, it is it is sir within the QRS complex after Parit. I think. Probably not. I think it is in the Q wave. Why? If you look at the timing, it is should be here. So yes, I sir, think yes, it's blocked. So you are absolutely right, but the blocked block P wave is within the T wave. So and then again, as you said, short PR longer PR, and this is a typical group beating. And the other feature is that this is a little longer and this is a little shorter. That's typical Wanke bar. That means the RR interval gets shorter even though the PR is getting longer. And then there is a blocked P wave, P wave then. So typical Wanke bar, otherwise uh, nothing else to uh, say. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir, I'm going to ask Dr. Rishad, Dr. Maisum Subhan. Arak John Kamra sir Nilbachito Kurbo. No shin did good. Okay, you can choose. Okay. This, sir. okay, fine. So okay, this one. Uh, I need uh, one volunteer for this SDG. Um the heart rate is 39 beats per minute. Okay, it is a Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, heart rate uh, is around 38, 39 yes. is given. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the PR interval? And PR interval is uh, PR interval is prolonged. How much? Uh, two, uh, two large square. No, it is not quite two. If you look at, can you see my pointer? One large and three small, so eight, eight. So that that should make 200, um, 300, 240 millisecond. No, three, um, 300, uh, 320 millisecond. 320. Huh? Yes. So that's prolonged. And that's prolonged. QRS duration. QRS durations are normal. Okay. So why is the heart rate low? Sir, uh, this, is a, uh, this may be a case of complete heart block. Why do you say that? Um. Do you see any other P wave? Why not sinus bradycardia? So to see to call it complete heart block, you should have many P waves and no relation between P and QRS complex. However, if you look at the PR interval in this case, PR here, PR here, PR here is constant, right? So my feeling is this P wave is making this QRS complex. If that is the case, it is not complete heart block. Two is to one block. And where is the other P wave? Here. Yes. So the, is this the P wave? Can you see my arrow? Yeah. Yes, sir. So if you look at it, there is prolonged PR interval followed by QRS complex. Next P wave, there is nothing. Is Next P wave, QRS. Next P wave, nothing. So this is actually two to one hard block. Look at lead two. If you look at lead two, you may diagnose this as sinus bradycardia with first degree AP block. And this is a common mistake that happens. So that's why you look at multiple leads. So please remember this ECG, even, even experienced cardiologists can report it as sinus bradycardia with first degree AP block if they don't look carefully at the other leads. So in lead V1, I can see the P wave very clearly. 
In lead two, I cannot see the other P wave because it's just on the T wave. So this is, thank you very much. That's good. Um, and now the, all those people ask me, is it Mobius type one or type two, second degree wave block? Um, this, you cannot tell anything because Mobius type one, type two means type one, second, two to one AV block, type two, second degree, two to one AV block. Type one is supra his, type two is infra his or his level. This one doesn't tell us anything. We just, I'll just call it sinus rhythm with two to one heart block. And of course, there are other findings. There is some evidence of left in enlargement. We are not touching those things today. Um, I want one more person for this one. Dr. Hanif. Dr. Hanif Mahmud Ontu. Can you, can you see him? Oh, we can. Hanif? Sir, Mahmud Hussain, sir. Okay, Mahmud Hussain. What do you think? <clears throat> So this is a sinus rhythm. Okay. I've given the heart rate. Heart rate is 46 beats per minute. And the PR interval? PR interval is uh, five small, near five small square. Sure, that's 200 and milliseconds, right? And it's um, regular, uh, regular, normal, PR interval, no, normal. normal. And what is the QRS duration? QRS duration is prolonged. How many boxes? Uh, around uh, five boxes, sir. And I think it's four. Four. So four, 100, four. 160 milliseconds. Why is it? Why is the QRS duration prolonged? There are commonly two causes. There are other causes. Right bundle branch block, left bundle branch block, right? Yes, sir. Which one is this? This is uh, right bundle branch blocks. Why do you say right bundle branch block? Because there is RSR pattern in V1. Perfect. Yes, that's good enough. I mean, if you, and also in V6, there is terminal S wave, but if there is M pattern, RSR pattern in lead V1, that's right bundle. So yes. what is your, do you say anything else? There is, is a left, left, uh, there is a left axis deviation. Yes, so left axis deviation. So again, so left axis deviation, QRS axis is minus 54. So there is left anterior fascicular block, right? Yes, sir. So right by bundle branch block, block, by fascicular block, right? Yes, sir. Okay, why is the heart rate low? Well, there are two, it can be two things. One sign is radicardia, or it can be any, a heart block with two to one heart block because there is a conduction. What do you think? So there is conduction block. Where? Sir, sir Dr. Mirja Mursalin want to add something here. Good, go ahead. Dr. Mirja sir, Mursalin. Sir, 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 it's the, it's the trifascular block. Yes, there is RBB. And yes. uh, there is left axis deviation and there is twist to one AV block. As yes, there is alternate PAB is not conducted. Yes. And there is in lead two, sir. Yeah, but why do you say trifascular block? Yes, sir. Um, there is R there is uh, RBB and left axis deviation. That is uh, uh, left yes. anterior block and there is twist to one AV block. That's why it meets the criteria of trifascular block. Okay. To call trifascular block, you have to have PR prolongation. So by the book, if you had first degree AV block, I'll call it trifascular block. But this is right bundle branch block, left anterior fascicular block with two to one hard block. And if you look at lead two here, P followed by QRS, this is the P that did not conduct. Yes, sir. P followed by QRS. So in this situation, we cannot use the term trifascular. You have to have first degree AV block to call trifascular block. So this is 
two to one heart block with the underlying right bundle branch block and left anterior fascicular block. Um, this is another example of, I'm, I'm going to do this one myself. So if you see this as a P wave, first degree if you block QRS, P wave, no QRS, P wave, first degree QRS. So again, question is, is it Mobis type one or type two, two to one heart block? But if you look at before, this patient actually has one bar followed by two to one. So that's a suprahesian two to one heart block. So that's why when we see just a strip, we cannot say type one. Once I have this one, I can say type one, two to one or type two, what is type one or type two AV block. Um, can somebody do, do this one? This is the person who will get the book. Mirja Mahad Morsali, Narekba Trai Kurti Chalak. Okay, good. Okay. Sir, uh, sinus rhythm, yes, it is uh, in truth ABF, there is clearly seen BOF. PR mm -hmm. interval is prolonged. Okay. Uh, PR interval is prolonged, and uh, there is a variable PR interval. And uh, heart rate is about, uh, about, uh, Heart rate is about um, it's about it's 30, 38 35. Sir. Yes, um, so, just one so second. In, one yes, sir. and uh, PP interval is uh, fixed, and R interval is fixed, and there is no relation between uh, P, uh, P and QRS. So, okay. it's probably sir, uh, complete heart rate, sir. Perfect. So, you started off with a prolonged PR, right? But I think your final conclusion is correct. So even though this first two P looks conducted, as we follow the tracing, we don't see any relation between P and QRS complex. Yes. Sir. So your final diagnosis is complete heart block, right? Yes, sir. Perfect. So look at this. So what I did, I put the timer. If you look at the R to R interval, it's perfectly regular. 1320 millisecond. And then these are the P waves. There is some variability of the P wave um, because P wave can have variation. But when I put the timers, there is no relation between this P to P interval. There is no two to one. If it were two to one block, it should have been 1500. Because here, 800 plus 720 is 1520. So there's a P and QRS by timing has no relation. Please learn how to do these timings. It will be very interesting. So it's not, an ECG like this clearly tells us this is complete hard work, but sometimes you will find ECG where there is some confusion. And in those cases, if you measure the time accurately, you will be able to tell the relationship. Thank you, this was excellent answer. Now, sir, Dr. Morsalin Pejache. Sure. Yes. Okay. So I want one more person to do this. I think this, or we are going to close after this or, yeah. Nazma Daisy, is she online? I think that I will do this one or unless there is a volunteer to do it. Dr. Hanif, Dr. Murad, ask a chub dick to Okay. All right. So this is heart rate is 46. And if you look at RR interval, it is regular. If you look at lead V1, there is a P wave, PR interval, but there is a variable PR interval, and there is no relation between the P and QRS complexes. Underlying right bundle branch block and left toward axis. So this. Again, I put the P wave here. If you look at this, the P wave, and I think there is a P wave here. There's P wave here, P wave here. So the P and QRS have no relation. Again, RR interval is constant. There is some P to P variability which can happen um, because of underlying sinus arrhythmia or vagal influence. So totally um, AV dissociation. This is again complete heart block. And this is another patient. Um, that if you look at it uh, carefully, that there is P, there is P, P, and the, the P and QRS have no relation. 
And sometimes, you know, as, as, a, as one of the audience um, mentioned that in some lead, I could not see the P wave, it's true. So you have to look at other leads where you can see it clearly. Um, and uh, you cannot just imagine things. So QR, we'll just talk briefly about QR duration and then finish it. Um, QR duration, beginning of the QRS to beginning of um, end of the Q, um, Q, QRS complex, normally 80 millisecond, and it can be up to 100 millisecond normal. And this one is prolonged um, QR duration is uh, 136 millisecond, and there is an M pattern lead V1, R, S, R pattern. And then in V6, uh, there is a terminal deep S wave, likewise in lead one. And this is the right bundle branch block. And this one is different. Um, again, wider QRS complex of 138 milliseconds, small R deep S, and then wide R wave in lead V6 and lead one. This is typical left bundle branch block. And sometimes you will see complexes which doesn't fit into any of those. And we call them non-specific interventricular conduction delay. Uh, but that has to, it doesn't fit into any of this. And uh, <clears throat> QRS axis, we, we learned the other day how to do QRS axis that we can look at lead one. If it is positive, it's on the right side. If it is negative, it's on the left side. And then we can look at one more lead, AVF, and that will tell us which quadrant this is in. And so I'm going to do this um, ECG. Um, we have shown it before now. So this is the right bundle. If you look at lead one, it's positive. So it will be on this right side, but lead AVF is negative. So it's on this side. So it's the left axis deviation and lead two is negative and lead two is here. So that means it's less than minus 30 degree. So this is leftward axis. So this is basically right bundle, left anterior fascicular block. And this is another one we have again, not typical M pattern, but this is again, right bundle branch block, but it has right axis deviation. So this is right uh, posterior fascicular block. I mean, um, somebody mentioned uh, last week that we have more, we see more left anterior fascicular block than um, posterior fascicular block is, is uncommon. Um, I think I'm going to stop here and if there's any question, I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, question, I mean, sir, question, Kurchi, sir. Uh, yeah. Dr. Kamal, Kamal Parvazar question, sir, what is the difference between every dissociation and complete heart block? Oh. Complete heart block is the diagnosis. Every dissociation is the finding. So if you look at um, the complete heart block ECG that I showed, the A and V are not associated. That means they are working independently of each other. So that's what we call this every dissociation. Um, but then the diagnosis will be complete heart block. Thank so you. next question, a difference between sinus block and sinus arrest. Oh, I, I did not show it on purpose today because that made it difficult. Sinus block is, so let's look at heart block. There is P wave, it doesn't go to the ventricle. Same thing can happen. The sinus node can generate impulse which gets blocked, cannot come out. If that is the case, it will be multiple of the P to P interval. So if there is a if there is a pause which is exactly multiple of previous P to P interval, that sinus node block. But if there is no P wave and the interval is not multiple, then it's sinus arrest. And usually there are uh, longer intervals. Uh, sir, Dr. Dr. Shaila Tastubar question, sir. Will you please show and explain two one block again? Oh, sure. Okay, so this is one of the two to ones. So it's the heart rate is 46. I'm going to start with lead two. P wave followed by QRS complex. This is the P wave, another one. If you don't carefully look at it, it will look like a U wave. But if I look at lead V1, you can see it's negative. 
So it did not conduct. And this P wave conducted. This P wave did not conduct. This P wave. So this is two to one hard block. Same, the previous ECG here, if you look at it, P1 rhythm step, P followed by QRS, P, there is no QRS, P followed by QRS, P followed by by no QRS, and that's continuous. So that's two to one hard block. Does it answer your question? OK. All right. Anything else? Any other questions? Sir, last question, Michi, sir. Yes, sure. One question, sir. I mean, shop answer will be the one she's got a job. Answer, Dr. Shofikul Islam read a question. Can we mm -hmm. comment about ischemia if we see the change in bloody arrhythmia and conduction block? Okay. So the question is, can we comment ischemia? ST segment change. If there is ST segment change with bundle branch block, then it is very difficult to comment ischemia. If there is ST segment change with normal QRS, Normally, what we will do, I'll, we'll come to this thing later on. We say consider ischemia because if you think about left bundle branch block, you can see fixed ST segment depression. That's not really true sense ischemia. It's a repolarization abnormality. <clears throat> so to call a real ischemia, it has to be dynamic. So let's say I do an ECG now, ST segment is one millimeter depressed, and then five minutes later is three millimeter depressed. That is definitely ischemia. So that's how we do it. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Amader Rashole, sir, Amader Zoom session er baire. Amader er tinti group er program ta live hotse. Aro one question chilo, sir. Kintu amra kan jyoto, sir. Inshallah, apne amader shita regular session hobe. Amra poor moti taro question answer session er jabo. Ami sir question answer ekhane shesh korchi. Ami sir, can we do something? If there is interesting question, can be emailed to me and then i can make appropriate slide and show it sure sir sure uh, shall do that definitely ami sir ekdom shesh porjay to professor kaji tarikul islam sir apnar ajker interactive session ta kemon laglo thank you uh, ashole uh, this was a brilliant session because uh, i missed uh, the first session and there is no doubt that uh, uh, Professor Rofiq Ahmed, uh, he is. Uh, uh, I, I I must I must say some background of uh, Professor Rofiq Ahmed because he was uh, the first boy in his class uh, when we studied in medical college. He was our uh, I I should say he was our idol, and uh, I can remember that uh, before they are posting in the. Uh, after internship, he used to take classes for the fifth year student. Uh, and uh, I can remember that he took our classes also uh, in ECG, clinical bedside teaching. So from the very beginning, he uh, is uh, a very uh, <clears throat> lucrative person, a student, afterward uh, a doctor. And we were just running after him when he will take class. So as a teacher, uh, he is a brilliant one, no doubt. And today's class, uh, truly I was uh, uh, observing all the uh, slides and the ECGs. And I'm very happy that our students, uh, those who participated and courageously uh, they came forward and trying to interpret and it is really praiseworthy. And they are really uh, taking part with their uh, real uh, uh, inner core uh, that they want to learn and they want to exercise this easy more and more. I must uh, congratulate uh, Professor uh, Rofiq Ahmed for his uh, brilliant uh, this ex ECG uh, display as well as interactive this is very important for us without interactive session uh, nothing can achieve and uh, uh, this is one of the lesson for, that we have learned 
just the presenter will give lecture and he will go uh, then uh, some people will ask oh i could not understand this and that but this was really interactive and obviously our students they got a lot of uh, benefit from today's presentation thank you rafiq bhai thank once you. again we will see uh, each other <laughs> once again and okay. you you are always uh, very uh, uh, very much uh, uh, loving beloved uh, to us and Thank we you. expect uh, your presence very frequently for uh, the development of uh, the students aptitude and performance thank you very much uh, ehsan okay. that you invited me to be uh, the part of today's uh, 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 situation and organization and the ecg displayed here i have learned also few things that what um, uh, rafiq bhai told and the students uh, they are uh, they did lot good i think they have developed their ecg performance better than the before thank you very much once again thank you uh, thank you kaji tarik sir apni o ekhon ashole amader pura desher jonno icon apnar kotha shonar jonno hajar hajar student opekkha kore sir थैंक यू भेरि माच एडिफिजिशियन सर विशाल इन्सपायरेशन सर तो रफिक सर पांच जन नाम डिक्लेयर कर दी अपना उपस्थिति दी डर महबूब रिशाद डर माइसुम सुबहान डर नौसिन तबासुम डर शारमिन कानता डर मिर्जा मोहम्मद मोर्सालीन आशा कर पांच जन हेमटनर इसिजी मेड इजी बोटा पे जा शीघ्र ही सर अपनी আপনার লাস্ট কমেন্ট দিবেন তারপর আজকে চেয়ারপারসন প্রফেসর মাহমুদ হাসান স্যার সেশনটা কনক্লুড করবে থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ अगेन ফর জয়নিং আস এন্ড अगेन আই উড লাইক টু এনকারেজ एवरीबॉडी টু অ্যানসার কোশ্চেন পার্টিসিপেট রিমেম্বার देयर इज नो রং অ্যানসার देयर इज অলরেডি অ্যান অ্যানসার এন্ড দেন উই ক্যান ডিসকাস হাউ টু সলভ দা প্রবলেম থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ अगेन আই উইল সি ইউ নেক্সট উইক অর সুন নেক্সট উইক স্যার ইনশাআল্লাহ নেক্সট উইক সো প্রফেসর মাহমুদ হাসান স্যার প্লিজ কনক্লুড দা সেশন रफिकेशन देखिए दिलेन सबाई के मन एगो एत क्लियर जे बोझार असुविधा हार कथा नये तब बोलो जे जरा पार्टिसिपेट कर नम्बर अफ पार्टिसिपेंट एंड दि नम्बर अफ कोश्चन इंडिकेट जे सबाई एट लार्ज नम्बर अफ डक्टर्स बांगलेशे शिखते चाय तो दैट इज भेरि गुड दैट इज एनकारेजिंग फर आस एपन के बोलो जो अपारा लेकर सुनल देखलें अपनारा इसिजी नहीं मान आनमार्कमेंटेड इसिजी डायगनोज कर चेष्टा करोर सेल्फ करतेशन गफिक अहमद सहेब और डिजिजर पैटार्न देखें आशा करी अपनारा और शिखते इट इज भेरि गुड थिंग कार्डियोलजिस्ट ना होते क्योंकि कथा हम कार्डियोलजिस्ट ना हम इसिजी पढ़ते सब डाक्टर ही उचित मन करी सब शेखा उचित सबाई शिखब रफिक सहेब के अनेक धन्यवाद व्यस्त मानुष कृतज्ञता सहकारे धन्यवाद और विडि फिजिशियंस के धन्यवाद प्लैटफर्म तैर कर फार्मासिटिकल अरेज कर दिए धन्यवाद रफिक 